health. But Welcome everyone to the Center for Advanced Research and Innovate Innovation here at Charisma University. We are proud to present original research in various fields. The committee members are Dr. Waller, Dr. Jimerson, Dr. Chukawuka, Dr. Butera, and I'm Dr. Dean, and this is Dr. Wade. Good afternoon and just trying to figure out what I'm doing, so bear with me. I'm going to ask you to mute your microphones and also to turn off your video because we are going to record this and upload it for YouTube. And I want to welcome uh, Dr. Veronica Butera. She is on faculty here at Charisma and um, she is a professor with us and she's going to start our presentation. Welcome, Dr. Butera. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Dr. Veronica Butera. Um, just some of my background and credentials. I do hold uh, dual MBA degrees, um, Masters of Biz Business Administration in both finance and marketing. I also um, earned my educational doctoral degree in 2019. And I volunteer for an org organization that's called AI for Anyone. And our mission is to bring AI education and information to the general population globally, eventually. Right now, it's centered mostly in the United States, so you all are getting a preview. But um, what we do with this organization is we do general presentations and a general overview of AI and what it is. So this is part of the part that I present as a trainer with that organization as a volunteer. And what you're going to hear from me is about the developing field of artificial intelligence and its impacts on the field of marketing in a few minutes from our other presenter. I just wanna take some time to explain what AI is and I'll explain some of the potential applications of artificial intelligence in general so that you'll better understand some of the terminology in our next presenter is going to discuss. Now, artificial intelligence is not a, a topic to take lightly. It's already being implemented in, oh geez, many markets for many purposes. And when you hear the term AI or artificial intelligence, most think of robots or something futuristic. We tend to think of Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator, or maybe WALL-E, the robot from the film. These are at least for now, very fantastical examples of AI. Click. Next slide, there we go. AI is based on the principles that human intelligence can be defined in a way that machines or computers can mimic the intelligence and complete tasks that humans previously completed. Artificial intelligence is um, made up of computer systems that are doing things that normally would need human intelligence. Now that's the key with artificial intelligence. These are things that normally need human intelligence. Think of Siri or Alexa. These are examples of AI. You ask questions and they answer the question for you. And they learn when they're answering that question. The more you ask questions and talk to these devices, the faster they're going to respond and they also learn as they go, as I mentioned, and they will present information to you based on the information that you're inputting, that you're giving to them. How do they learn this intelligence? Well, programmers entered words and phrases with potential results. These devices learned where to go, and then they connect the data. Artificial intelligence process processes data and looks for patterns to build shortcuts. And this is a very basic definition of how it learns. Click. So let's see how this works. If I were to write a program for a regular computer just to identify a tiger, I would imagine it would look something like this. The program that I would write, the question is, is this a tiger? So some of the points that I would have to look for with this regular computer program is, does it have four legs? Does it have a tail? Does it have two ears that stick up? Does it have whiskers? And does it have black and orange stripes? So if I were to write a program like that, and those were the data that the computer had to look for, a regular computer program would come back with, yes, 
This is a picture of a tiger. Click. Now, based on this description, if a regular com computer program sees this photo, it's going to draw the natural conclusion. That's a tiger, right? It has four legs, it has a tail, it has two ears that stick up, has whiskers, and it has black and orange stripes. But we all know as humans that this is not really a tiger, but a regular computer program takes the criteria that it's given and it's not able to tell or differentiate the difference between these two photos. Click. On the other hand, if we give the computer program examples of animals that are not tigers and examples of things that are on the edge close to tigers, but not actually tigers, then artificial intelligence will take this information and it will take the yeses that definitely are tigers and it will determine that the animals in the middle are not tigers and the ones on the right are edge cases, meaning that they have a lot of the same characteristics as tigers, but they don't match that first picture ex exactly. So this example demonstrates that AI is only as good as the data that it learns from. Keep that in mind. That's a very important point with AI. Click. So these are some examples of autonomous cars. OK, now these are cars that drive themselves with no human involvement at all. A self-driving car, there is a difference. A self-driving car is a car that can drive itself in most or even all circumstances, but a self-driving car must have a human passenger. This is a concept that sounds kind of cool for a lot of people, but many are still skeptical. Think about the convenience and the ease to sleep while being driven across the car can do the driving and you'll be well rested after the trip. Click. Now think about the same technology, but this time we're going to put that technology in a military vehicle. These can be sent into a war zone with no human passengers. Sounds safe for the humans, right? But remember, AI learns from the information that it's given. So this is already being done. There are drones that are being used in conflicts today. We all know from the news that in the Ukraine there are there are drones being used by both sides. Um, they're being directed by an operator. A person is guiding it. But there are also drones that are being programmed with artificial intelligence to be autonomous, to be able to do their own thing without a human sitting in the seat, so to speak. So a thing like that without any human intervention is only going to pull from the information that it's given. Now imagine that the wrong person is giving that autonomous vehicle their version of the information rather than the information that would be safer or more acceptable around the globe. Click. So these autonomous technologies use image recognition and spatial awareness to learn or other data. It doesn't have to be image recognition. It could be data sets like numbers and um, other types of information that are being put in. Now, robots are being built and programmed to perform industrial functions as well as military functions. Robotics are being used to perform delicate surgeries in areas where there may not be a surgeon in that area, but a surgeon in say the state of California in the United States would be able to sit at a desk similar to this picture and perform a surgery in a country halfway around the globe or all the way around the globe remotely by using robotics and artificial intelligence. Click. Another form of AI that's being used is being used in Amazon Go stores. Now, I'm not sure if they've been launched globally, but they are available in some areas here in the United States. And what Amazon has done is they have used autonomous technology to open these stores that when you go through their doorway, your purse, your wallet, your pocket is scanned for your Amazon Go card that is tied to a credit card. You go through the store, you get the items that you want, you put them in your bags and you leave the store. That's it, no checkouts, 
no scanning the items. That item is scanned. When you take it off the shelf, you put it in your bag in close proximity to your car, your membership, and your credit card. And when you pass by the scanners to exit, your total is scanned to your and charged to your credit card. So click. Now, some of these technologies um, are going to result in positive changes in our world. Now, surveillance cameras are being used all over the world. Some cities are able to take images and they store them. And when they tie those to autonomous technologies and we see these images and they're being input into autonomous or AI technologies, somebody who's walking down the street in New York City in, in the United States, then that same image, that same person turns up in the UK, for example, then AI can tie those together and track the movements around the world of that person. So these types of AI use facial recognition and classification programs to learn. But the thing is that because, again, AI is only as good as the information that it's given because of these technologies in this instance, just so you understand how artificial intelligence works, it's very important for all of us in society to be aware of artificial intelligence and to try to promote and encourage positive uses of AI in all of our markets, in all of our industries, so that no one gets left behind. Click. It's also very critical to have a basic understanding. So just as a conclusion and a quick review, it's important to understand that AI, artificial intelligence, is when computers use skills that normally need human intelligence. AI learns through repetition and it needs good data and it is a tool that can create positive and negative outcomes. It's also critical, as I mentioned, that we all have a basic understanding of AI in general and its applications across the markets and globally. And the examples that I've discussed today are only the tip of the iceberg. So AI is a field that's changing weekly, if not daily in some markets, and it's crucial for everyone in every sector of business, even as private citizens, to understand these basics. It's the technology of today and will be the technology of the future in the way that we live, in the way that we play, the way we work, the way we run businesses, and the way that we educate our populations. So I want to thank you for giving me those few minutes to give you a basic overview of AI. If you do have questions, we'll be addressing those at the end of our presentation. If you would click, please. Our next presenter is Kingsley Anyawu, and um, he is a an MBA student here at um, Charisma, and he's finished his um, presentation for his degree, and he is going to be discussing um, the impacts of AI on marketing research as a quick overview. Kingsley, go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Butera. When I was a kid, the message was clear. Intelligent systems are going to kill us. Today, the message is a little bit more nuanced. What they're going to do is to replace us. They are going to take away our jobs. They are going to take our industries. They are going to change everything and they are going to make us irrelevant. Now, is this true? Is this actually where we are headed? Is this the true reality in business, in marketing? Today, I'll be taking you through um, the evolution of artificial intelligence in marketing industry. And we'll also be looking at the potential disruptions of artificial intelligence in marketing research, marketing strategy, and marketing job security. Click. So over the last two decades, disruptive technologies such as Internet of Things, Big Data Analytics, Blockchain, and Artificial Intelligence have changed the way businesses work. Of all these technologies, Artificial Intelligence is the latest technology with the greatest potential for marketing transformation. The influence of AI is reflected in core elements as big data, 
machine learning, robust solutions. The idea of big data implies that marketers can aggregate and segment large amounts of data within minimal uh, time frame and with minimal manual efforts. Using this data, companies can be confident that they are delivering the right message to the right people at the most appropriate time through the right channel of choice. So this research examined the evolution and the potentially disruptive impacts of artificial intelligence on marketing research strategy and job security. Next slide. So um, now that we have a good overview of what artificial intelligence means, I'd like us to have to all be on the same page as to what marketing really implies. Marketing involves customers, strategy, branding, concepts, solutions, opportunity, research, innovation, advertising. Marketing is a complex field of decision making. Marketing managers make decisions based on deep customer knowledge regarding products, brands, advertising, promotion, price, and distribution channels. Marketing is the foundation of business. Marketing decision-making refers to the tactical marketing mix instruments, the well-known four Ps of marketing, product, price, promotion, and place. And of course, strategic issues such as product development, innovation, and long-term decision concerning um, positioning, segmentation, expansion, and growth. So in other words, marketing is the foundation of business. Before you start thinking of business, most people go back and do a market research of who am I selling these things to? What are my prospects out there? Because if you're setting up a, a business, um, it's all about what the customers need. You have to think of the customers first. And once you start thinking of the customers, you've started the marketing process. Next slide. So we all know already that artificial intelligence is um, a concept that mimics human intelligence in machines. It causes um, which are set to think like and mimic people action, people's actions. So as marketers and consumers adopt artificial intelligence services and applications simultaneously, the exchange process between buyers and sellers in the markets is fundamentally changing. Think of how we used to shop 10, 15, 20 years ago and think of how we shop today in 2022. A lot of difference. Most of our shopping today are done online and most of uh, the things that we buy, once we make a purchase, uh, the things that are related to the things that we bought initially are recommended to us. And I know, for example, when you go on Amazon, um, you see that the most likely things that you purchase are the things that are recommended to you. If you go to streaming, um, streaming websites like Netflix or YouTube, the type of videos you watch are recommended to you. These are the uh, ways artificial intelligence has um, upgraded marketing. AI in marketing uses modern tools and technologies to analyze user data and help marketers understand their target audience, to offer customized content and relevant products to specific customer groups. In this regard, AI tools are used in digital marketing to learn customer behavior through customer communication. Whenever you are online, AI applications, AI devices, take notes of the things you are doing. They take notes of the kind of videos you watch, and based on that information, they recommend videos that are related to the ones they saw you watch. So AI is studying human behavior. They are studying consumer behavior. 
And what we are seeing today in marketing is that AI has moved from an appliance or a device that is used to just collecting data to a device that is used to make decisions. Click. So these are the subfields of artificial intelligence. We cannot talk of artificial intelligence without mentioning machine learning, expert systems, natural language, speech recognition, vision, robotics, and planning. There are other subfields uh, from all these, but we'll talk more of that uh, in the next field, in the next um, slide. So some of the AI use cases in marketing. Before I go uh, to how AI is being used in marketing, let me also mention that AI currently is being used in over 100 different fields. AI is used in the health sector. It is used in human resource. It is used in operations, in manufacturing, in so many other fields. But in marketing, um, I just picked out six of the most prominent use cases of artificial intelligence. Uh, where we've seen artificial intelligence do the work that humans used to do and do it more effectively and more efficiently. Data analysis and interpretation. Artificial intelligence uh, can analyze large, vast, amount of data within a short period of time as against human uh, analyzing those data. Automated decision making, I said before, just like artificial intelligence studies the customer behavior through your antecedents online, artificial intelligence now is able to make decisions based on those customer behavior that they have get gathered through data. Content generation. This is another area that uh, we are seeing artificial intelligence gain new grounds now. There are new applications that create co content for people. Um, a friend of mine that is a good blog that uh, does blogging just told me recently that he uses artificial intelligence now to generate a draft of. Uh, maybe he wants to he wants to write on a different a, a particular topic. He has an apl application where he'll just put the topic, and the artificial intelligence machine will generate an article on that topic. He will now just do the edits, and that's content. Personalized content on online channels, language processing, language processing applications like uh, Grammarly which we all use, we know that um, the more you use Grammarly, the more intelligent it, become, intelligent it becomes. Uh, it processes natural language, and um, based on the amount of data that is put in it, it's able to uh, give more accurate and more competent feedback to users. Next slide. So the research questions, how has artificial intelligence evolved from a mere concept and an object of fantasy to a vital mechanism today's competitive marketing depends on? How is AI potentially disrupting marketing research, strategy, and job security? Click. The research need, there's a knowledge gap and uh, skill gap in marketing and business regarding the evolution of AI in the field. This paper aims to educate marketers on AI's evolution and its impacts on marketing research strategy and job security. Number two, the paper makes an honest attempt to identify those sectors that have shown good acceptability of AI in marketing and the ones that will benefit the most. Click. So the research objective number one is to contribute more informed research and literature to the marketing field of study and to business practice. To build on the various research efforts in the marketing field, particularly as it concerns AI evolution and its potentially disruptive impacts on marketing strategy, research and job security, and also to examine the current trends and 
perspective and perspectives for future click. So based on this, um, I built uh, the research on three theoretical frameworks. Number one theory is that artificial intelligence is no longer a mere fantasy. It has become a necessary tool, a necessary technology for competitive advantage in marketing. So a lot of um, literature was taken into consideration and um, I'll just uh, read out some of them that support this theory. According to Dadoki and Agat 2018, AI is evolving into a significant force in the marketing world. It radically improves an existing company's operations and leeway for entirely new business. Notably, there is increasing interest in applying artificial intelligence technology in marketing innovation. According to Cox Lezinski, 2020, Gesner and Scott, 2009. Click. So more literature to support that theory. Business implement implementation, marketing strategy, sorry, business businesses implement marketing strategies to achieve business goals and create massive breakthroughs using small and large ai according to peyravi and nova 2020 change is the dominant fact today in marketing constantly speeding up the main alteration in the marketing environment is the emergence of electronic data processing devices as an effective tool for scientific marketing. Most businesses benefit from online communication, electronic data processing analysis, and information retrieval systems to help marketing be more effective and more efficient. Peravi and Labnova further noted that this has led to the emergence of real-time marketing. Click. More literature to support that from that theory, according to Tech Pro Research in 2022, tech innovations often derives AI's enterprise adoption. Of the nearly 200 executives surveyed recently, 71% said their company has an innovative strategy to push investments into new technologies like AI. Furthermore. 59% of companies said they had a budget to fund innovation, and 62% said their budget increased in the last year, in the last one year. This shows that um, marketing has a AI in marketing has evolved with increased marketing has evolved with increased use of artificial intelligence. Next slide. So the second theoretical framework is built on the theory that marketing research is becoming automated and marketing strategy formulation as a result is also becoming more innovative. So we look at some literature that support that. Minsberg 1978 stated that decision-making patterns sh shape strategy. Decision-making patterns are informed by research and both are essential to an organization's performance. Marketing research and strategy are essential to achieving an organization's goals. That's according to Hendrick and Fredrickson, 2001. So artificial intelligence as an emerging technology enables business to track real-time data quickly analyze this data, strategize, and respond to customer needs objectively. Next slide. So the third theory is uh, built on the assumption that marketing jobs are potentially threatened. Some manual jobs will disappear while some new jobs will be introduced as a result of increased automation. So according to Ericsson et al. 2020 and Brawatch 2018, 
deposited that AI has already started taking on jobs that is in the past need that in the past needed managerial attention. Today, AI is starting to form an essential part of business growth, causing a significant inflow of automation. AI is already automating some judgments in the marketing interface with customers. Judgments that were initially made by humans. Click. So a global survey of more than 1,000 large companies already using or testing AI and machine learning systems by Accenture PLC identified a new and unique human workplace category across the board. These roles do not replace the old ones. They are novel and require exceptional skills and training. According to Accenture, Accenture Research 2021, click. So we now go into the research um, methodology. The research was both explorative and descriptive. Secondary data sources were employed, and the structured interview was deployed on the social media platforms. Uh, the secondary data sources included studies and surveys conducted by government and non-government institutions, articles, reports, and other peer-reviewed papers. The primary data sources included interviews that were conducted among marketing directors, professionals via social media to assess the evolution of AI in marketing and the various disruptions experienced in the field due to AI. Click. Qualitative research approach was used to provide the researcher with an understanding of the phenomenon AI in marketing by observing or interacting with the study participants. One of the most significant strengths of um, qualitative method is that they can generate detailed descriptions of the participants' thoughts, processes, and focus on reasons why and how the development has occurred. So the researcher, I, I uh, had the goal uh, of using this qualitative research in order to understand and explain why things are happening the way they are in the marketing industry um, as against predicting and generalizing uh, the information I got during the research. Click. So to validate the findings, um, I sought to assure the reader by employing the sources, commercial, theoretical, and primary. However, to be critical, uh, there, there was appropriate, it was appropriate that um, I asked myself the following questions before choosing a particular source. Number one, has the researcher of the source written books, surveys, articles, or reviews on the subject matter? And is he or she part of the AI, machine learning, or marketing community? Number two, has anybody referenced his or her sources in this research and peer-reviewed papers? Number three, what are the comments and reviews, feedback regarding these sources? Positive, is it harmful or neutral? These are the three questions I used to choose um, the sources that I used for this research. Click. So we go to the findings and results. Secondary research findings, 2021 state of marketing AI report compiled responses to 13 questions about AI and its position in marketing. Some of these questions were critical to the objectives of this thesis, and hence the responses were adopted. Further data on 49 different marketing AI use cases across five marketing categories, planning, production, promotion, personalization, and performance was compiled using Marketing AI Institute's AI score for a marketer's assessment tool. A sum of 235 people answered all the survey questions, and the full assessment was compared to a rate of 
49 AI use cases with some questions receiving up to 425 responses. Click. So survey respondents represented diverse roles in the marketing and technology disciplines and company sizes. The survey respondents were collected between October and December 2021. The highest percentage of respondents were 22% identified themselves as CEO and president, while the entire C suite comprised of 38%. Other top roles that were uh, included were uh, chief marketing officers, senior managers, um, directors, and managers. Next slide. So we move to the key findings for the first survey. The question here was, what do you believe AI's net impact on marketing job over the next decade will be? So 56% of respondents believe AI will impact job security positively. They agree that AI will create more jobs in the marketing field than it eliminates. However, almost 23% believe more jobs will be eliminated because of technology. And 13% said they do not know. Click. The second question was, how important is AI and its evolution to the success of marketing over the next 12 months? 52% of respondents said AI is critically important to the success of their marketing in the next 12 months. Responses show that 37% of marketers believe AI is critical to the success of their marketing over the next 12 months. And another 15% say it is critically important. Only 4% say AI is unimportant. Next. And the third question, what outcomes are your marketing team achieving with AI today? Respondents were asked which results in their teams were, uh, were accomplishing with marketing AI today. They could select multiple answers. Respondents commonly used AI in marketing to accelerate growth and enhance performance, 41%. Many, 40%, are getting more actionable insights from AI marketing data. Respondents create personalized consumer experiences at scale, 38%, by rounding out the top three most common results. Click. So we analyzed the findings from the AI, Marketing AI Report 2021, according to Drift. The age of intelligence automation has already begun in marketing, and most marketers know it. AI is no longer an idea or a fantasy. It continually evolves into a vital mechanism that drives marketing growth and competitive advantage. Forward-thinking organizations like Amazon, Google, Meta, are already employing AI to accelerate revenue and reduce costs. Unfortunately, most marketers lack adequate education, training, and confidence to understand, pilot, and scale AI technologies. The job security of marketers in the future may hugely depend on their education and training in AI skills. AI is more likely to create more jobs than it eliminates in the long run, but it is vital to note that some manually performed jobs will be lost and some will be modified. Click. So the second survey from McKinsey and Company Marketing AI Reports. So the analysis of findings, I didn't go into all the details, so I'm just going to analyze the findings of the next two secondary reports. The latest uh, McKinsey Global Survey on AI results indicated that AI adoption continues to grow and the benefits remain significant. 
as AI becomes more common in business, it, uh, the tools and best methods to make the most out of AI become more sophisticated. The online survey was conducted from May to June 2021 and received responses from 1,843 respondents, representing the entire range of regions, industries, company sizes, functional areas, and tenures. Click. Next slide. Findings from, okay. So the questions, um, the third survey from Caltrics survey, the latest Caltrics survey was also used to examine the disruptions of AI on marketing research strategy and marketing job security. The survey, um, it surveyed 250 marketing research decision makers to ask how much they believe AI will impact the industry. 93% of marketing researchers see AI as an industry opportunity, and 7% see it as a threat. 80% say AI will positively impact the marketing research industry. Both younger and older researchers share this view. 26% say AI will create more marketing jobs, while 33% believe it will reduce the overall number of jobs. 39% do not think it will change the job market. Next slide. Furthermore, the survey revealed that AI is most likely to make marketing research support and pure analysis jobs redundant, such as statisticians. There is a 95% chance that the job of statistic marketing statisticians will be automated. Research analyst jobs will be automated up to 94%. Data scientist job up to 65% will be automated. Marketing analyst job up to 60% will be automated. Some market research professionals expect to change their roles, while others prepare to switch careers. Researchers want to customize their AI roles to verify AI-generated data accuracy. 12% considered changing jobs from market research to protect their jobs from AI. The market research task most and least suited for AI as follows, advanced data analytics in the most comprehensive AI technology um, expected to impact in the industry. 63% say AI will take over data analytics within 10 years. Next. So researchers say that 26% of surveys will be done orally rather than typed within the next five years. But 74% say that verbal surveys provide lower quality data than typed ones. Researchers do not believe that AI will change research design tools. The task researchers most want to delegate to AI are the localization of surveys and data cleaning in different countries. Next. So, Summarizing now, AI is evolving rapidly in the marketing field. AI is commonly used today in marketing activities where speed is essential. AI tools such as data and consumer profiles to learn how to best communicate with customers and deliver timely and tailored messages to maximize efficiency without the intervention of the marketing team members. AI is employed to augment marketing teams or perform more tactical tasks requiring less human nuance for many of today's marketers. And such marketing professionals believe AI is an enabler, not a destroyer of jobs. However, this conviction is not shared by all. Some argue that AI will take up marketing jobs. Next. Finally, some jobs will be lost, some will be modified, 
and new ones introduced, but innovative skills will be required for people to remain relevant in marketing. Next slide. So the primary research, 50% of interviewees acknowledge that AI has become a necessary tool for competitive advantage in marketing. 25% believe AI is not yet a major factor in marketing and remaining 25% were indifferent. On AI's disruptive impacts on jobs, 75% believed it will impact job security negatively, while 25% of respondents believe AI will affect jobs um, positively. Next. So discussions, conclusion, and recommendation. We are obviously in the infancy stage of artificial intelligence adoption in marketing. However, four cited organizations are already using AI to accelerate revenue generation and significantly reduce cost. They build sustainable competitive advantage for their products and their people. Regarding jobs, it is better to operate assuming that the machines will intelligently automate 80% of what we do every day as a marketing team in the next 10 years. That does not mean that 80% um, of jobs will go away. However, AI will automate away some tasks, evolve current roles, and create entirely new ones. Marketers who do not get up to speed now will be left behind. While AI will augment and not replace marketers, it will nonetheless have a disruptive effect on the industry in most instances. This calls for adequate education among marketers, training, and more confidence to understand, pilot, and scale AI technologies for business growth. Click. The state of AI in marketing today is both a challenge and an opportunity. The challenge is for AI-powered companies, vendors, and champions to drive AI education and adoption with more innovative solutions and approaches. Furthermore, it presents an opportunity for every marketer to evolve into a next generation professional by embracing marketing technology. Next. So my recommendations for further research, a detailed review of research papers on each topic provided insights into research gaps and helped point the direction of future research. The research gaps are decrypted into research questions that further researchers can undertake and solve. The questions I put out here are three in number, and number one is, what are the identified identifiable drawbacks of the evolution of AI in marketing. Number two, in what ways can marketing academia upgrade the marketing educational syllabus to accommodate AI technology training in marketing and business field? Number three, is marketing eventually going to evolve into marketing technology? Next. These are the references. Next. Next. And thank you. Thank you very much. So now I want to turn it over and ask, um, are there any questions for either of our presenters? Um, can't hear you, Dr. Yep. Christie. There we go. <laughs> Again, I did the mute thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so either have you, what? Um, Dr. Butera, Kingsley, uh, how do you program these things? Uh, do you, have you done any programming to do artificial intelligence? Um, I, I'm just, I don't know what the question is. Um, I'm just putting it out there for either of you. Dr. Butera, you're on mute. 
Kingsley, you're also on mute. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. That is way beyond my expertise. <laughs> there are computer programmers. That's an well, IT field. Now, that would be a computer field um, job or position that hmm. would be um, done to input the information that they're provided and translate that over into computer code at a very basic level of that. Um, I mean, I could give you some other examples and get into talking a little bit about like Python and all these different computer programs that are written and, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> We're not going there, but that's a whole different field. But the thing is that um, from my side of artificial intelligence and with AI for anyone that I volunteer for and you, anybody can go to their website, it's AIforanyone.org and they've got all kinds of materials there um, for people that want to share the information, that want to be more familiar with it, that there are all kinds of resources to learn a little bit more about the basics. Um, because on our level, unless you're in um, the IT field, information technology field, or the on autonomous technologies, I'm sure there's going to be an AT field soon um, that's going to take over IT. But um, that is something that on our level, we really need to understand that number one, artificial intelligence um, learns things that humans normally do. And number two, that artificial intelligence is only as good as the data that we give it. So our programmers need to put that information into these systems that are being built in this technology and our programmers and our leaders and our all the way up to the top, you know, on down to those programmers are giving these systems, these computer programs, the information to learn. So from just a general global citizen standpoint, it's important that all of us understand that artificial intelligence is here. It's being used today in a lot of different markets, a lot of different industries, and we're all sitting here going about our daily lives and have no idea that this is all going on behind the scenes. But we do have the opportunity to make an impact, whether it's, um, you know, getting the right leaders in place in our countries that are going to represent the average citizen's interest when it comes to AI. You know, and and rather than putting the military leaders in charge who are going to represent their take over the world kind of of um, of game plan with artificial intelligence, that's where it becomes a true global issue, because globally we all want peace. We all want to get along with everybody. We all want to be able to live together for a long, long time in a global world that is safe and happy and you know all of those kinds of things. So we need to be aware of these things so that we can start at the bottom with what we can do and then gradually moving up the ladder to those that are in power or that are in charge, making sure that as citizens, as global citizens, that we are getting to have some input into what goes on. Thank you. Kingsley, what do you think? Yes, I, I agree with you. And um, the process of uh, learning for machines, if I may say, is done through a technology called machine learning and deep learning. So machine learning is more of the part of artificial intelligence that gathers data analyzes them and transforms them into information that can be used for decision making. So deep learning is the technology that layers each level of data collected into different uh, categories to answer different questions. So the process, uh, programmers will explain that better the process of feeding the whole technology of artificial intelligence is done through these two subfields. Thank Excellent. you. I think we see we have a hand up, Dr. I'm, I'm going to say it wrong. Aim. 
Yes, I am. You got it right. Got it. <laughs> wow, you good for once. You just <laughs> pronounce like my mom does. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm so, in fact, I'm so excited to see the faces uh, because I've seen names and I'm seeing the faces. I'm able to put the names to the faces. It's, I'm so happy. Uh, this is this has been a very, very uh, informative uh, presentation. Thank you, guys. Um, question is, will you make available your PowerPoint to us uh, at some point? Can you share your PowerPoint, please? Sure, Dr. Ann. <laughs> That's going to be... Why not? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can get that out to everyone, yes. Yeah, that's the way it is. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Uh, Charisma is very pleased to present this and our, our carry information um, for our Center for advanced resources and research and innovation. So um, congratulations to Kingsley who completed his master's this this uh, semester. Thank you. And I had the nice preview of this and the preview of all the pages that he sent before. And I have to tell you that when I read the master's thesis, uh, they're usually pretty good. And, you know, we all have been there but Kingsley's was outstanding and it was written at a doctoral level and I just was so impressed because you know I read what seems like thousands of these each semester but it's really not but as you go through somebody's dissertation or master's thesis line by line word for word uh, you feel like you're you're kind of married to them and at the end of that I just went wow he really put together with very very little help or guidance on my part I really wasn't needed that much which is amazing <laughs> and I said we really needed to hear from him so I'm pleased that we were able to bring him to you Dr. Dean if you will sign us out thank you on behalf of Charisma University and the Carey team we would like to thank you for attending dr butera kingsley thank you for your presentation it was awesome thank you thank you You're thank welcome. you all and this will be available on youtube very soon thank, <laughs> thank you, you. <laughs> bye bye, bye, -bye.